<laughs> hey guys, how's it going? It's me, uh, Ashwatsur Vatsun, and welcome back to On the Same Wavelength, where we will be discussing the past week in science. Now, as you may have noticed, hopefully because you're checking out my channel every single day, like a dedicated subscriber, I haven't been posting videos recently. That's because, uh, due to various reasons for the past week, I've just been unable to record, uh, it- was I won't go into too much detail about the situation, however, I just in general have to say that it just was like actually not possible for me to record, there wasn't a logical way for me to do it. It's not something that you should ex expect, it won't like suddenly become common that I'll be missing weeks like this, it was completely random, just happened by chance, so sorry about that. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. I'll be posting uh, uh, some more stuff throughout this week. I'll try and do an animation during the school week, which might be a bit hard this week. I'll try and do that though, just to make up for the lack of videos. So yeah, sorry about that. Be sure to stick around for the rest of this week. I'll be posting some new videos, maybe start something new. Just in general, stuff like that. Uh, anyways, let's get right on in the week, uh, the past week in science. Starting off with something I think is really interesting here, Cambridge scientists say they have perfected a method of mass for mass produ uh, producing the form of carbon known as graphene. Now, if you don't know about graphene, graphene is basically pure carbon in one of its forms. Uh, in of a very, it basically comes in really thin sheets, and it's extremely durable, can conduct energy extremely efficiently. It's basically like a really cool, almost super material. Um. It, 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 it's extremely thick, thickly packed, it actually has two-dimensional properties, um, and it, it, it just can conduct heat, uh, electricity with, like, really good efficiency. Uh, it holds a considerable amount of weight, considering, uh, uh, how little it actually weighs in general. It's, uh, I think a hundred times stronger than steel, actually. So that's, like, crazy awesome. So we've just found a way to like legitimately mass produce this. I know for a lot of articles I say, hey, don't like concern yourself about this because we're not actually producing yet. It's just a demo. But this is actual mass production of this uh, pr product, which can be and which will be extremely useful in technology and hardware in the modern world. So I think that's pretty awesome. In medicine, researchers have developed a drug delivery system consisting of nanoscale cocoons made of DNA that target cancer cells and trick the cells into absorbing the co uh, cocoon before unleashing uh, unleashing anti-cancer drugs. Sorry, I can't English today. Um, this is a really cool uh, method of combating cancer, um, especially in the past. I mean, I think I've already done one talk about one method of fighting cancer uh, in uh, on the same wavelength previously, but I think all these new methods that are coming up are just so, like, this concept in and of itself is just so innovative that if we actually get it to a stage where it, it I mean, I don't know how the tests for this have gone, but if, if this actually works out, it's going to be really, really awesome for solving a lot of the problems we have in the modern world. Moving on into neuroscientists, scientists, scientists, sorry, in Cambridge again, have found hidden signatures in the brains of people in vegetative states, which point to networks that could support consciousness even when a patient, patient appears to be unconscious and unresponsive. Uh, very interesting because uh, a lot of people who go into a coma or an, uh, who are in a vegetative state are kind of just abandoned. There's nothing we can really do for them. But the, the uh, I mean, it's assumed that they're just like out of it, basically. But this idea, what we've discovered, that there could actually be brain functionality almost at a normal level is extremely interesting. So this may suggest uh, new developments in that field and possibly finding a way to get people out of said vegetative states. Uh, in space, a stream of x-rays being spewed from the sun could be the first ever distinct detection of dark matter and, ex and an example of the mysterious axion particle interacting with the Earth's magnetic field. I think I say this every single week, but space is pretty amazing. Like everything we're learning about space, our future is space, I think personally, that no matter what we do on Earth, uh, our, our future really, um, and this goes back to Interstellar, which it looks like a great movie that that's coming out soon. Our future is really in Earth. Um, I'm gonna quote Inter. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go cheesy. 
Okay, but yeah, I, th I think everything we're learning about space is just so, like, amazing. Uh, that w that we should totally you guys should totally be interested in that once again in space here the x337 uh, b orbital test vehicle the highly secretive un apparently not so high highly secretive if we know about it the highly secretive unmanned space shuttle that has been in orbit for the past two years is scheduled to return to earth this week it'll be very interesting to see what data we've we've been gathering from this because it's highly secretive uh, unmanned shuttle uh, and yeah it's gonna be, uh, I'm not sure what it's been collecting, but in terms of data, no one's really sure of that. So, uh, it'll be really interesting to see what's actually going on with that, if, if, if we're actually told what's going on with that. Who knows if we will be. And finally, in geology, a new study on the practice of hydraulic fracturing, or fracking, has found a direct connection to some 400 micro-earthquakes micro in an Ohio town. Now, fracking is an extremely controversial subject. There are people on both sides of the matter. Uh, many people advocate for fracking uh, and simply deny any side effects that it may or may not have. Many people suggest that fracking does have extremely severe side effects for uh, towns near where it's occurring. So uh, I'm not going to take a side necessarily on this issue or split it one way or the other, just that it's a very controversial issue. But it looks like there's evidence to suggest that fracking does actually have a few uh, legitimate harmful side effects, mainly these micro earthquakes, um, which is understandable considering that we're like basically fracturing the ground and uh, extracting gas. So um, it'll be interesting to see what this contributes to the fracking debate going on right now. I urge you guys to follow that issue throughout the week and see what may or may not develop in that field. Uh, and that's our previous week in science. I hope you enjoyed this and let's move on into the word slash phrase of the week and the song of the week. Now I always say we're doing the word slash phrase of the week. It usually just ends up being a word of the week as it is this week, but maybe who knows? I'll pick a uh, phrase for, uh, for, for Wednesday. Uh, and you you guys should totally stop by on Wednesday for uh, politics. Anyways, esculent is our word of the week that's spelled E S C U L E N T, uh, and it means uh, it's an adjective that means edible. Uh, so uh, it's it's a uh, it, it sounds very uh, fancy. It's it's not uh, nece it's not necessarily an extremely uh, sort of strange word that you, like, schadefreuden isn't, uh, that was my word of the week for last week. That's not something that you're necessarily gonna be saying every day, but I'm pretty sure you can use esculent, uh, in basically every day. Um, now, uh, just a bit of a fact about the word edible, uh, because a lot of people assume that edible simply means, uh, it is able to be eaten. However, that's not necessarily true. Edible actually also can mean that, uh, it, it tastes good or it's appealing. So, uh, you can totally use this word in com common life. Say, uh, uh, that pasta was extremely, or, yeah, that pasta was extremely escu esculent. No, wait, it's an adjective, so, yeah. But, uh, esculent pasta is my favorite because it tastes good, something like that. That was a really bad sentence. Never use that sentence. Alright, so that's our word of the week. Our song of the week is going to be Silence by Aeon Spoke. Aeon Spoke is a, uh, independent band who, uh, I don't believe they're currently producing any music, uh, but they produce somewhat, um, alternative rock sort of saddish sounding music. I like the sound of the music. Uh, some people may not like the sound of the music, but that's going to be our song of the week, so stick around for that. But before we get to that, I'd like to say thank you so much for dropping by. Once again, I'd like to apologize for the lack of videos in the past week. And no matter what, I'll see you guys in the next episode of whatever that may be. Don't forget to live long and peace out. Bye!
Thank you.